Hey there, and welcome to another episode of The Cutting Room Floor. This is where I take you into some of the content and material that I couldn't get to in a sermon. Um, here at Sunny Slope Church, we've been going through the book of Joshua. And yesterday we came to probably one of the most, probably the most well-known story in the whole book of Joshua, if not in the entire Bible, um, one of the more well-known stories, and that's the story of Jericho and the people of Israel marching around the walls and the walls come down. We talked a lot about how that uh, that story is really a story of God acting as a warrior for his people, as well as God bringing judgment into the world. And we talked about um, how that points to God's ultimate judgment on the power and the presence of evil in our world today. And we got into a little bit about what that, um, what that, why that's actually really good news for us, even though we don't like to consider judgment as being a positive thing when you pay attention to the, to the reality of abuse and injustice and violence and oppression in the world, then the idea that a perfectly righteous and just God will execute judgment, that's actually good news. What I want to um, spend a little time, oh, and I'll put a link to that sermon, of course, in the uh, end of this video, so you can go back and catch up on that if you missed it. But what I thought I would do is take a few minutes and take you to some of the, the um, archaeological evidence and background to the city of Jericho. We are told that the city of Jericho was a city that was never rebuilt again. And, and strictly speaking, that's true. Um, Jericho itself was never rebuilt as a fortified city. However, there have been little settlements in the area where Jericho um, was located um, really for a very long time since the time, even since the time of the Old Testament. But it's not proper to say that the city itself, as the Israelites knew it, was ever rebuilt. Um, there is some, um, you know, through excavation and um, study of other civilizations, there is a fair bit of information that we can get about how cities were built and constructed in those days, including the city of uh, Jericho. And I'm going to put something up on um, the screen here in just a second that will uh, point you to, that will just maybe give you a visual of what the city of Jericho might have looked like. So let me put this up on the screen and let's do it like this. Um, this is what a walled off city would have looked like in the time of Israel. And you can see there's a couple of things worth noting. The first is that there's not just one wall for the city, but there's actually, um, there's, there's really two walls with kind of a, a sloped uh, earthen wall here around the bottom. And then you have this main wall around the outside of the city. And then you have inside between, because you have this higher or upper wall also, but then you have this area in between the two walls. And it's quite possible that this is where Rahab lived in this area between the two major walls. Um, we're told Rahab lived in the wall, which is a little hard for us to imagine, but it makes a lot more sense if you see that there's both this upper and lower part, and it's conceivable that she then lived in this area. Um, this is what Jericho looks like today. They have done, um, you know, they've done actually excavations on the city uh, a number of times over the last couple hundred years or so. One of the things that's interesting is that there's scholarly disagreement about exactly when the city of Jericho would have been standing. And th there's most agree that it was in the Bronze Age, but whether it was in the middle, early or late uh, Bronze Age, no one is exactly sure. And so it's hard to date the story of Jericho exactly, um, at least from an archaeological point of view. Um, but this is what it would look like today. You can see it's, it's, you know, it's not a city at all. It's just a lot of um, archaeological sites. Here's what it looks like from above today. Um, you can see, I mean, there's not a lot to see there, but in a minute I'm going to show you how the 
just kind of the difference between back then and now what it would look like. But one of the things that I found striking was that they have done archaeological digging. Um, they found where Jericho was likely to be and they started doing some digging. There were a number of things that they, uh, that they concluded based on archaeological evidence. One of them is that the, um, the, the way that the city wall collapsed probably was in, in the judgment of uh, archaeologists was due to um, an earthquake. And they can determine that by the way that the wall fell down, by the way that it kind of collapsed um, from the foundations, they can, they can determine that it was a very cataclysmic collapse. In other words, this wasn't just erosion over time, and it wasn't just um, an army punching through one part of the wall, but it was like this massive event that brought the entire wall down at the, at the precise, at, at really at one time. And so the evidence points to this, this massive collapse of the foundation of the wall that then allowed the Israelites to uh, that would have allowed the Israelites to actually climb up over the rubble into the upper part of the city and destroy the city. They've also found a pretty significant layer of ash. And what that tells you is that whatever was left of the city after this earthquake was burned and was completely destroyed by fire. And that, of course, is both of those things are consistent with what the biblical account tells us, that the walls came collapsing down at once now archaeologists would tell you that it's an earthquake and the biblical text says that at one time God when the Israelites blew the trumpet the walls came collapsing down those two ideas are not mutually exclusive in other words they can both be true it's possible that um the that that God caused an earthquake at the precise moment that the Israelites blew their trumpet it's also possible that God simply brought the walls down in one massive uh event in any case, those two ideas fit together perfectly well. The biblical account of the walls just falling down and the archaeological evidence. Um, and then, of course, the biblical account tells us that Joshua and his army burned the rubble of Jericho. They burned everything so that there was nothing left. And that, too, is consistent with the archaeological, uh, archaeological evidence. What is um, one, one final piece that I think is sort of interesting is that Archaeologists have found that there are uh, jars of grain that have been preserved. And you might wonder, well, why is that important? Well, the reason that's helpful to know is that it lets us know that there was not a prolonged siege against the city. One of the things I said yesterday is that there's really five ways. In, in ancient warfare, there'd be five ways that you could take a city. You could go over the wall, under the wall, through the wall. You could fool the people of the city somehow, or you could besiege the city. You could close it off from all outside so that nothing goes in, nothing comes out, and essentially the people inside starve, but that could take months or even years. The fact that there was grain preserved in these um, stone jars tells us that the people were not starving to death. There was no siege that was going on because if there were a siege, then you'd expect to find absolutely no food anywhere preserved in the city, especially not these giant jars of, of grain. And so, um, you know, the, the, the likelihood of it being a siege is, at least from an archaeological, archaeological point of view, is, um, is quite slim. Now, I want to show you one more thing here. I'm just going to pull it up on my screen, and that is this. This is uh, this is kind of it. It maybe helps us imagine. Oh. Well, it doesn't want to work for. Oh wait, here. So here we go. Try to put that in. So there we go. Okay. So here's, here's what the city of Jericho might have looked like. Well, let's, let's start it this way. Might make, better, might make more sense to start like this. So here's what the site looks like today. I showed you a picture of that um, just a couple minutes ago. And you can kind of see this is modern day Jericho. You can see it's primarily consisting of these archaeological dig sites and um, palm trees right there, by the way, which is important because the city of Jericho was called the city of palms. And so it's kind of fitting there's those palm trees here. Here's what it might have looked like back in the time. 
of the Israelites. We can kind of superimpose an, an image of that wall back on the place where it was. And you can just then begin to imagine um, what it would have, what, what the Israelites might have been up against. You can, of course, the roads aren't there and these buildings aren't, but certainly the, the greenery and uh, you can kind of maybe get a sense of a picture of what it would have been like. And as the Israelites go up against this massive fort fortified city and, uh, and the danger that they're facing, um, and yet the, the, the message is that God goes to war for his people. God fights on their behalf. And that, that becomes a picture for a greater reality that we have in Christ, right? We face all kinds of adversity in our world today, the, the power and the presence of sin being the greatest adversity. But, um, but God has gone to war for us. He's gone to war in Christ against the power and the presence of evil. And he's brought those down to defeat. And, uh, and that's the good news of, of uh, the story of Jericho. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, you can check out today's sermon. You can find it right here. I'll have a link up. Um, also love it if you subscribe and uh, check in. Um, we'd love to have you back and uh, join me again next week when I do this all over again. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.